Hello, eighth graders. We are going to talk about chapter nine in our tectonics iBook today, which is about volcanoes at what are called hot spots. Hot spots are areas within a, a tectonic plate. So we've talked about volcanoes happening around the boundaries where they converge or where they're pulling apart, but we also can have something called a hot spot that happens in the middle of a plate. And one prime example of that, we've got two really big ones here in the United States. Um, one of them is Hawaii. And we know Hawaii as a very volcanically active area. The volcanoes there are a little different than what we might think of when we think of a big explosive volcano. They are called shield volcanoes, and we're going to talk about the different types of volcanoes more in the next chapter. But I just want to talk today about how do these hot spots form so far away from boundaries and what do they cause, okay? So the Hawaiian Islands are all volcanic rock completely. I mean, if you think of all of Earth, realistically all all of the crust, all of the rock we have here on Earth was once molten, right? Back in the Hadean, our entire Earth was molten and all of that lava cooled into what we now have as rock in our continents. But some Earth is much younger than our continents and Hawaii is a good example of that, okay? So, um, it says, although most volcanoes are found at convergent or divergent boundaries, intraplate, meaning, you know, inside the plate, not on the boundary, but inside the plate, they can be found in the middle of a tectonic plate. These volcanoes rise at a hot spot above a mantle plume. Melting at a hot spot is due to pressure release as the plume rises through the mantle. And Earth is a home to about is home to about 50 known hot spots. Again, we are going to talk more specifically about Hawaii and then also we'll talk about Yellowstone because those are two very different types of hot spots and they are, you know, in our home nation. And so you've definitely heard of these two spots. But again, they are found throughout the world. Most of them, as you'll notice, are on the ocean, right? Most of them are right over oceanic crust. And only a couple times do we see them actually occur over a continent. And there's a reason for that that I'll get to in a second. Okay, so the South Pacific has many hot spot volcanic change. Okay, so here's the Pacific Ocean right here. Here's the South Pacific. Hawaii, again, is one that we are going to be talking about a little bit more in depth. So what happens here, and um, I'm going to attempt to explain this with a ski pole and a turkey baster. Because, you know, that's what distance learning is these days. It's looking around your house and trying to find things that you can teach science with. And all I could come up with was a ski pole and a turkey baster. So here we go. Okay, so here's my ski pole. The ski pole is moving in this direction. So it is moving in the direction in which the point of the ski pole is pointed, all right? So imagine that this is a plate. And this plate is moving like a conveyor belt, okay? It's the Pacific plate. It's moving very slowly about the speed that a fingernail grows, but it's moving, all right? Well, in the center of this plate, so let's say that this little part here that makes my pole go longer or shorter, Let's say that this is in the center of the Pacific plate, okay? And this is where Hawaii is. Underneath the oceanic crust, there is a very highly pressurized mantle plume, okay? So there is a collection of magma underneath this area of the plate. And the pressure has built so much that it was able to break through that oceanic crust and create an escape route for all of that pressure and all of that magma that is in the center of this plate, okay? And that flows out, that's what my turkey baster is for, <laughs> that flows out, like I'm, if I was squirting water out of this, or magma actually, out of this turkey baster, 
it flows out of this mantle plume at the same spot, okay? So let's say that, I'll put a little post-it on my ski pole. All right, so let's say that this is the first of the volcanic islands of Hawaii, okay? So the plate is moving and the mantle rises, all right? It rises through this turkey baster and it rises so much that it creates an island right here above the water, okay? That island is going to have an active volcano on it, all right? It's gonna have an active volcano and that volcano will continue to erupt and continue to erupt until the pressure has been released from this mantle plume or the volcano, because this plate is moving, actually moves off of the mantle plume, okay? So if this moves off, this turkey baster is going to continue to shoot mantle up. It's going to continue to shoot magma up through the oceanic crust. And eventually, if there's enough magma in one spot, another volcano will erupt, okay? Creating another island. And that will continue to erupt. Now, this one doesn't erupt anymore, right? It is no longer attached to the turkey baster. So this island is now, that volcano on that island is now what we call extinct. It will not erupt again because it has no source of magma. Okay, so the magma shoots up through the turkey baster right here. It creates another island with an active volcano on it. This continues moving. This plate continues moving at the speed of a fingernail growing. When this island moves off of the mantle plume, it no longer has a source of magma, and so it stops erupting. Magma builds up, pressure builds up in the ocean crust, and boom, we have another island that is formed. Okay, and that island, whatever island is above that mantle plume underground, is going to have an active volcano. And that continues and continues and continues. So what that means is that we get these in the, in the middle of a plate, we'll get these chains of volcanoes that kind of come in a line. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a, you know, it's not in a straight line, but mantle plumes will break up through the crust in a little bit of a different way. And whichever one, like Tahiti, we'll say Tahiti right here, if the plate is moving in this direction, then these islands used to be volcanically active, but now they have no more source of magma. They're not over the mantle plume, and only the island that is above the mantle plume will have an active volcano on it. And it is the same thing with Hawaii. Hawaii comes, um, I don't know if I have a map of Hawaii on here. No, I don't. Um, Hawaii will have, has a whole chain of islands and only one of the islands, or two actually, that are kind of over the mantle plume have active volcanoes on it. The other ones have moved off of that source. It's kind of like a conveyor belt at a grocery store, right? They're all moving along and only the island that is above that mantle plume is going to have access to that magma and then they continue moving, okay? So you could say if you know if you're looking at Hawaii and you're looking at which island has the active volcano, all of the other ones, those are all older rock. Those are all those were all created a very long time ago. They no longer have a source of magma and those volcanoes are now extinct, okay? So what that is saying is that the active volcanoes in Hawaii won't be active forever. That plate is still moving at the speed that a fingernail grows. That'll eventually move off that magma source and a new Hawaiian island will eventually be created. Okay, that's how hot spots work. They're just areas underneath in the middle of a plate where magma has broken through that oceanic crust and it creates this flood, this plume of magma that needs to escape somewhere and it builds these island chains. And we see that in a few different places on Earth. Um, Hawaii, for us, being the most popular. They can, hotspots can also occur over land, okay? Um, 
a, an example of that in the United States of a continental hotspot is Yellowstone. Okay, so it says the hotspots that are known beneath continents are extremely large. And the reason for that is that it takes a massive mantle plume to generate enough heat and energy to actually break through that continental crust. The continental crust is much thicker than oceanic crust. Okay, so it's really difficult for that mantle to actually push through the continental crust. And so what you get is this collection of a lot, a lot of magma underground, and it spreads out into this massive area. Yellowstone Park is actually, you know, it's Montana, it's part of Wyoming, it's humongous. And underneath the ground, there's this big pool of magma, and that whole area vents itself on a regular basis to kind of release some of the pressure. This whole area is, um, this whole area, it, what is left over is what's called a caldera. And we'll talk more about calderas in the next chapter when I talk about different types of volcanoes. It says the eruptions that come out of these hotspots are infrequent, but often massive and explosive. Okay, they're infrequent because, again, it's really difficult for mantle to push through that thick continental crust. Whereas in the oceanic crust, it's much thinner. And so the magma just kind of continually comes out of these volcanoes. That's why the Hawaiian Islands, we don't have big, you know, peaked out um, volcanoes that have massive explosive volcanoes. These ones just kind of ooze on a very regular basis for many, 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 many years until that particular island moves off of the hot spot, which is my turkey baster. Make sense? There's a couple animations in case my little ski pole um, it, demonstration <laughs> didn't really click with you. Um, I'm going to attach a two videos that I would like for you to watch in addition to this lecture. Okay. And that will explain what I was trying to say a little bit better. One other thing that I want to just clarify here in our last chapter, we talked about um, we talked about how we have these island chains, these continental island arcs, like in the Cascadia range from British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, California, and all of those volcanoes kind of formed around the same time, right? That subducting plate came underneath the North American plate. And that mantle rose up and it built that whole chain of volcanoes about at the same time. And so the big difference between hotspot volcanoes versus island arc volcanoes or continental arc volcanoes is that continental or island arc volcanoes are all about the same age. That mantle rises up in a huge area and all of these volcanoes will pop up. They don't necessarily pop up. It takes them millions of years. But on a hot spot, you will see a chain of volcanoes that are all different ages. The youngest one being the one that's over the mantle plume. And then the furthest from the mantle plume is the oldest. And all of the islands leading up to it, you know, the oldest, the next oldest, you know, they're all extinct. They no longer have access to the mantle plume. And only the one that's over that mantle plume is active. All right. So I hope that um, the couple videos that I that I attached to this lesson will clarify a couple things. All right. And we will talk about different types of volcanoes next. Thank you.